So thanks, Chloe, uh, and welcome everybody to the podcast. Um, I hope I can provide this as an informative session and feel, feel free to ask questions. Um, so this piece of the presentation, I thought I'd look at the omnichannel uh, solution for fashion. And we're going to, first of all, just look at what is omnichannel, because I think there's a lot of confusion out there um, in terms of what is omnichannel, what is multi-channel, what is cross-channel. And a lot of our customers would ask this question all the time. And simply put, you have multi-channel, which is, you know, again, all these terminologies, but it's a way of selling in multiple different sales channels. So whether that's in-store on your website or um, that's um, through, um, uh, sorry, on your website, in-store, or it could be through mobile, okay? Uh, Cross-channel is where there are different channels available with crossover, for example, with click and collect, but it isn't all integrated and there's no supply chain integration. So the idea behind Omnichannel is that all the sales channels that you have out there where consumers, there's a consumer touch point that you connect all of those sales channels under one connected, consistent um, and holistic consumer experience. Uh, and it allows you on the supply chain side to fully integrate every piece of your supply chain so that you maximize your stock value and, and in, indeed ensure good customer satisfaction and co customer um, feedback. Um, because obviously through Omnichannel, one of the advantages is that you, know, you, shouldn't be, you should always be able to fulfill orders from a customer. So that's just a little bit about what is Omnichannel. And forgive me if, if you guys already know that, but I think it was worth just pointing out the three different pieces. So the next kind of slide, what I thought I'd look at is why it's important and what are the market statistics, what's happening in Omnichannel, why is everybody looking at Omnichannel, why are particularly people looking at click and collect as an evolution in the, in the, in the growth uh, to Omnichannel. So look, 56% of uh, in-store spend is influenced by all digital channels. And the, 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 the idea is that with Omnichannel, Omnichannel shopping, you have a 30% higher lifetime value for that customer than those who um, shop only using one channel. For example, if I just go into the store. Very interesting as well, and uh, that the loyalty for customers who have used an omni-channel solution, uh, that 89% of those are, they're 89% much more loyal to the brand. And actually those who don't have an omni-channel solution, uh, the churn rate is about 33%. So there's a dramatic difference in trying to retain your customers and getting repeat custom and building the average lifetime value for that customer as well. And it's proven to increase your average lifetime value. Um, and you'll see there from some of the statistics on screen that DSW reports that 40% of its sales are picked up in store and 20% of those are picked up online order that they actually end up buying more. So you're in the store, you pick up your product, it drives footfall into your store, and then somebody, 20% of those people buy another purchase. Um, and so a lot of the customers that I'm working with um, are using click and collect as a way of driving footfall because as digital becomes the primary channel for sales, um, it's important to try and use that channel to drive footfall um, and drive value in store. So. So what can Omnichannel do, okay? And we talked, touched a little bit about football, football, and obviously the opportunity to upsell to online customers. Um, I mean, that's one of the benefits, but I know for fashion clients that I work with, a huge benefit is that they have, you know, many, at the start of the season, a product could be worth $100, and at the end of the season, it could be worth $50. And so the margin is squeezed in the lifetime of that product um, within that season. And so you have huge, huge issues with stockpiling, for example, where you need to get rid of a lot of stock, um, or you just simply can't provide that stock um, in store or in, you know, in the warehouse. So the idea behind connecting your full supply chain means that when somebody does want to order that yellow color of a certain dress or a certain uh, product that isn't necessarily in store, um, they can provide it because you can provide it through other stores or through other warehouses because the inventory is all synchronized um, and so it provides a better experience for your customer but it also provides a much better um, um, way of managing and storing your stock um, so 
And it, 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 it gives you the ability to maximize the lifetime value of that stock, uh, both across stores and across warehouses. So, I mean, looking at some of the practical things, what do you need to implement an omni-channel solution? Well, obviously you need a great digital commerce platform um, that is recognized by Gartner um, in the 2017 Magic Quadrant, that would be Kumo. Um, but once you have the Kumo platform, um, I think one of the pieces that is often left out is the retail level, because um, everyone's looking at digital, but you can't ignore the importance of maximizing the ability of having your sales assistants in store fully trained with the right, with, with the right equipment um, and easy access to POS interface so that when I go in store and if it is click and collect, one, I could know a bit about the customer so I know about the previous purchase history, but also if you have an easy to access POS interface, if the customer is looking to buy, that 20% that is looking to buy when they come in to click and collect, you can upsell. And you can say, actually, I know that you, you, you know, there's, there's a new range that has just come in, actually, and that is very similar to that. While, you're, while I'm getting your order, perhaps you can have a look. It's just over there on the left. And come back when you're interested and, you know, you can find the size for them, et cetera. So it is about the upsell. It is about making sure the sales assistants are trained and they're, you're empowering them. To be great advocates for omni-channel uh, because ultimately they're the face of this in store. Um, I think that it is very important when you're looking at a platform to look at cloud versus on-premise. Uh, on-premise is where you have to physically install uh, the platform on a particular PC or a particular server, whereas a cloud-based platform means that it's much easier to synchronize all those sales channels, whether it's retail, um, your POS system, um, and indeed the consumer. And you, you take app, you get free access to all the upgrades, and so you don't have to worry about your system going down and losing orders, etc. Right. So, um, I think one of the things that we've looked at, one of our customers uh, is Diodora, as we mentioned, and at the start of the season, they have a lot of stock, um, and obviously constantly um, resupplying that stock. But at the end of the season, they want to get rid of that stock pretty quickly uh, to get ready for the next season. So, you know, I definitely think Omnichannel is a, a great way to maximize inventory across all of your uh, warehouses and stores. And um, it also allows you to take advantage of other sales channels like marketplaces. And um, so in the case of Diodora, what we did was we, we opened up 14 new markets uh, on eBay for them within five weeks. Um, and we sold all their stock and actually generated a couple of hundred thousand in revenue per week. Um, on their last season's stock, which is pretty compelling, right? And so one of the benefits of being on a platform that also connects with marketplaces is you can take advantages of all those sales channels. And even in terms of uh, managing your orders, you can actually see by sales channel what orders are there. So you're not looking at different systems for retail, different system for marketplaces, different systems for mobile. It's all connected through one order management system. I think it's very important to be agile. You know, Gartner recommends and recognize that by 2020, over 50% of e-commerce sites will use more than 12 to 15 different technologies um, to have them scale their business and drive sales. Uh, and I'll, I'll drill that into that in a bit more detail. We're all, we're all aware that GPRD is coming in May. And um, so I think that, you know, preparing for that is obviously very important so that you do have those opt-ins, but also maximizing the data to provide a contextual experience for your shopper and um, that is holistic across all sales channels and consistent across all sales channels is a crucial element. Um, and that's been fed back by many customer surveys. And when they go to an app, it's completely different to their online store or when they go in store, the experience is completely different. So. That's a key part of an omni-channel strategy. We already mentioned about overstocked items uh, tied up to the warehouse space and capital. And so out of stock items results in a poor customer experience. You don't want a situation where somebody is going online but only has access to, for example, the main warehouse stock and doesn't have access to the stock that's in store. So omni-channel allows you to synchronize the inventory across your store at the store level, as well as the warehouse level. 
to make sure that you know there is availability for for the customer, um, and so it's it's a crucial part of that. I mean, just in terms of some of the, the the bits and pieces on in terms of being agile. I mean, one of the things that we do again as Kumo is that we provide access to one click partners. So, for example, if you want to look at bringing in a feedback system to introduce, in, 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 you know, improve customer loyalty and SEO and all those kind of things that are very relevant to omni-channel experiences, you can just one click add Fidity to your site. Or you can indeed see on the slide that from across all those areas, we have many different partners. It just means it's easy for you to do. Our philosophy is that you can choose a partner from within our ecosystem and you don't have to go externally to look for those partners, then pay integration fees. These are all free and you get access to them when you get access to, to the Kumo platform. So it allows you back to the point of Gartner, Gartner making around omnichannel and around future-proofing your, your solution. Being agile and being able to use multiple different technology vendors to plug and play based on where you're going to turbo boost your sales is a crucial element. We've already talked about data and the, the importance of data in relation to, you know, one GPRD, but also providing a contextual environment. Um, so making sure that your e-commerce team and your sales assistants in store have real-time product information, inventory information, um, providing your, the team in, in store and the e-commerce team with customer information and previous purchases and their preferences to contextualize that experience is a crucial element. I think it's going to be a big focus for a lot of retailers that I know in the UK going forward. We've mentioned this again, it's just to summarize being consistent. And um, so again, providing co consistent co customer experience across your brand. So, I mean, we all know the importance of creating a brand experience both in store online and across all your um, consumer touch points and um, but i think a lot of people forget that and so the marketplace might look completely different um, and not have really good branding and your in-store could be amazing or your online site is lagging behind your in-store or vice versa and um, so it's very important as we look at experiential stores as part of the omni channel experience to take that into consideration um, this is just a very quick example of one customer who we worked with to deliver in a uh, to deliver a non-channel solution. Um, it was an Italian fashion client. They have about two thousand stores worldwide, and um, a lot of people will be familiar with the sub brands there. So Alina, Miro, Motivi, um, etc. Um, and so they really wanted to deliver a kind of roadmap around uh, increasing turnover, customer experience, and driving football, as they were you know, a premium brand and they were investing heavily in their stores. So we created an omni-channel solution. And actually, if you go to YouTube and type in uh, Kumo uh, omni-channel, you should be able to find the video, which actually shows the whole experience of the customer coming into the store, picking up, and actually getting it delivered at home. So it's a really good video actually to show physically how it happens at a retail level. But we connected about 300 of their stores, and so all their warehouses, or all their stock, and their warehouse was integrated in stock synchronization across all their channels. We co combined their multi-brand strategy, so five brands under one joint strategy, okay, because we all know that a lot of retailers in the fashion space are multi-brand retailers. Um, and so it's important that you can provide the whole, the whole set, set of products to your consumer online. You're not just providing a disparate approach with just one of your brands being online. So the multi-brand strategy to synchronize stock and provide all of that available um, was a crucial element for them. And indeed, actually, they discovered through online sales that one of the biggest markets for them ended up being Russia. And so we ended up adding, for example, a Russian marketplace as one of their sales channels um, to their omni-channel experience. But it provided all of the traditional omni-channel options. So pick up in store, order in store via the POS and tablet um, with the sales assistant. You can also return uh, your items via the store. And it was integrated with their fidelity and gift and loyalty system. 
and it also provided a multi merchant management from one platform. So multi merchants could all log in with a specific login and access the platform. And um, so yeah, it was a pretty pretty successful case study, and we're about to actually roll out a major um, retailer in the UK and um, across I think it's 500 stores in the UK, a big retailer. I think they're in the top 10. Um, and that will be rolled out in the new year um, as well. So I can't say much more on that or I'll be shot. So, and that concludes the first piece of the presentation, Chloe. I hope that helps. Oh, Kieran, that was awesome. Um, very, very interesting. And I love the fact you started with a definition of what omnichannel is because it's a word which I think different people mean different things. And I think it's so important to make sure everyone listening gets what omnichannel is and the definition before you go into things. So thank you for doing that because that was would otherwise have been my very first question for you. But <laughs> before we get into my questions, because I've got a whole stack of them here to ask, um, could you let us know a little bit more about Kumu and where everybody can get hold of you? Of course, yeah. Um, so Kumu is a digital commerce platform. Uh, we're a cloud commerce platform. We were recognised by Gartner in the 2017 Magic Quadrant uh, of the leading vendors in digital commerce. Um, we have about 500 customers um, who are all international customers. Um, we've brought brands like Dolce Gabbana online in their first early days, LVMH, uh, Acquisa Parma. So we've been there at the very start. So we've been around 17 years. And um, it's only really in the last three years we've really focused on Kumo as a software platform uh, to power brand sales. And we connect all sales channels like we discussed in the presentation. So one of the only platforms that allow you to manage all those sales channels. So you can log into Kumo, you can manage your marketplaces, you can manage retail, and you can manage any other any other sales channel that you have. Excellent. And where can they find Kumo online? Yes, please go to kumo.com uh, for more information. There's a, a two-minute video which shows you an overview of the platform, and there's loads of great case studies, including the uh, case study on Omni channel up there for you guys to have a look at. Marvellous. Okay, let's now um, get into my questions. Oh, before before we get to my questions, two things I need to tell you all. First of all, you will find the links down here together with uh, the PDF of the slides. So if you want the slide deck, you can grab that as well. And the other thing is, if you've got questions for Kieran, um, then please do put them in the Facebook group, which you can find via ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash Facebook. But for now, I get to ask my questions, which hopefully will uh, will will, will duplicate some of those that you're currently thinking about so it strikes me and I, I'll preface this question with I don't want to get too deep into GDPR because it's something where I'm kind of actively avoiding talking about until until it's all a little bit more solid so I don't want to get, like yeah I, I don't want to get yeah yeah we're not talking about that either or Trump banned subjects um, so I don't want to go deep into GDPR but it does strike me that the benefits of being on a cloud-based platform where those updates and the security side of it is taken care of for you is just such a sensible play these days because you can just know that I don't need to worry about someone patching that machine or a flood or a fire because it's in the cloud and it's dealt with. And that just, you know, just to be able to kind of delegate the responsibility for site security to someone else just seems such a no-brainer to me. Is, are you finding people are coming to you looking for that in particular or it's just kind of a hidden benefit? Yeah, both that and fraud obviously are two areas where, um, you know, it's hugely important to have in a cloud platform that actually manages the data transfer between us and the, and the payment gateways. Mm -hmm. So um, absolutely we are and it's very good that you pointed that out, Chloe, because actually we're PCI compliant as well. Oh, cool. So it, it means that when somebody's, for example, credit card details are put into the system, they're all SSL encrypted before they're sent to the uh, payment gateway. So we actually don't store that information. It's encrypted before it goes externally. And so that's one of the benefits of one being PCI compliant, but two being in the cloud is that we manage all those security updates and all of those data protection updates in the cloud for you. They don't have to worry about your servers going down or um, somebody hacking in or, you know, data, data corruption or any of that. So um, I, I had a I was at a conference a couple of weeks back where someone very bravely, which is I 
chose not to put this out in my takeaways podcast about the conference because I figured it was for the people in the room only. But they very bravely explained how their on-site system, you know, where they had VPNs going out to their shops and this, that and the other got compromised. And like 10 days before Christmas, the day after their last catalogue mailed, they got a hacker locked everything down and ransomed them for three Bitcoin, which was a lot cheaper back then um, yeah, yeah, that's for but, sure. but you know 12 months on she was saying we are waiting for the anniversary with gritted teeth because in the end they paid the money because no one else could restore it they were still finding bugs six months later and they were very nervous about the anniversary date if that um, hacker was going to come back again because they knew they were completely at the mercy quite why they hadn't moved to another system in that time is beyond me but yeah. um but i mean that's... it's difficult i mean we all know it is difficult to protect against hackers um, but you can, all you can do is put enough layers in place to make it difficult. Um, but as you said, the benefit is that we can provide real-time time updates, a bit like virus mm. software, right? And the real, provide real-time updates to try and prevent that from happening. Yeah, I think um, I think they had like an outsourced IT guy who came in once a month or something, and it was yeah, right. not good. No, um, it good. <laughs> so. I, it take, kind of strikes me that the other benefit of, of embracing the omni-channel experience, which whether you've got one store, one online store, or whether you've got lots of lots of different channels that you're selling through, the principle remains the same, which is understand where your stock is so as you can sell it for the best possible margin to whoever wants to buy it. That seems, seems to be kind of like the other big theme running through it, would you say? That's... It is, and, but it, and, and one of the big benefits, I think, for example, one of our customers is Havianas, the flip-flop makers, mm. right? They can imagine the variety of sizes they have to provide in, in flip-flops, right? In all different colors and all different sizes, right? And so every store is not going to have much stock of the, yeah. low stock of the low selling items. So the benefit of uh, Omnichannel is I can, as a customer, see if that stock is available in store, my local store. If it's not, I can also say, right, well, okay, I'd like to get that delivered, and it'll be delivered by another store, for example, who does happen to have the yellow flip flops in size five or whatever it mm. might be. So the benefit is that it's not just from a you know from a stock point of view, from a, from the vendor's point of view, from the retailer's point of view, but also from a consumer point of view, it means that they can get that you're not losing a sale uh, because you can access that stock that might just happen to yeah. be. In a, you know, it could be a Manchester versus London, um, and so and the logistics in country, you know, there's not a huge difference. So it it, it doesn't hemorrhage your margin from that perspective either. It it strikes me as well the you know especially with a with a brand like Havianas is presumably ha- having real time stock information and knowing where it is and being able to dispatch it from anywhere to the customer who wants it also means they can reduce how much stock they have in the first place because you don't have to worry so much about spreading the stock out you know you don't you don't have to have ladies size 3 which are tiny for those of you who don't understand that as a as a shoe number because sizing's a nightmare geographically yeah, issues yeah. but a tiny lady size 3 you know you could seriously reduce the volume of those you have to manufacture in the first place if you know that the customer in London can be satisfied by stock quantity in Manchester. So there must be a well, bit of a bit of a an cash flow reduction as well as the margin improvement. Yeah, well, I mean, interesting enough, looking at that customer and a couple of other customers, we you know we looked at actually the value of what sales were lost as a result of stock resupply. And I'm sure a lot of the people listening in today as retailers will know there's a big issue in, in trying to the resupply process. And so one of the other benefits of Omnichannel is you can be much more um, aware of the trends um, in terms of the, the stock resupply, but also you can, you're can you supplying to many more locations, so you're not putting everything in your warehouse mm-hmm. because actually you're taking advantage of Omnichannel by depleting the stock in store. So you're actually supplying much more directly to the store as well, and you should be driving more sales in store of those products as well. If you look at the statistics that 20% end up buying in store as well, just through increased football, football through Omnichannel. So I think there's a double benefit here, but mm-hmm. you do have to make sure that it's a consistent experience for the consumer. Otherwise, you know, and it's interesting if you look at their expectations, the statistics would say that over 50% of consumers now just expect that click and collect is an option. Yeah. which is kind of phenomenal when you look at the top 20 retailers in the UK 
and how many of those actually are doing omnichannel. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a small percentage. Now, I'm in touch with a lot of them, and a lot of them are, are, are now, you know, starting to look at that. But um, it's interesting that there is a gap between the consumer expectation and, you know, where the retailers are at. And I can understand that. It's not easy, right? No. Omnichannel can be quite complex. And I think a phase plan looking at click and collect, sensing proper synchronization, then harmonizing all the channels, there can be a phase approach that can be much more practicable. Uh, I think sometimes retailers will think, oh my God, omni-channel is a nightmare. It's going to cost me the earth and it's going to t- it take me years. Um, and the reality is we try to simplify things by just taking breaking it down into phases. Um, so. Yeah, okay. The, I have a, a last question for you. Which kind of comes up, it was Deodora, wasn't it, you were saying, who cleared out their end of season stock via the e- Mar- eBay multiple yeah. places in order to get the better margin and free up the space for the new season stock, which is what they wanted on their website. Um, I'm going to kind of, actually, I'm going to merge two questions into one here, which is, I think that's a really interesting strategy for using the marketplaces as stock clearance, not just yeah. as, a, as a selling platform. So I'd be interested to know what other methods you're seeing people using it for. But this is the big question, though, is, is it now possible to turn a fashion business into a seven figure business without using marketplaces? <sighs> Jesus. Or advisable, that's not, that's, either. <laughs> that's a big question, Chloe. I mean, how long have we got, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, I think that when you look at the verticalization of fashion um, and you look at the fast fashion brands that are, you know, all doing really well in the UK, so the Tesco FNS of this world, mm-hmm. one we're just about to, to finish off a deal with, um, they're doing so well, okay? And, and so look at what, what, you know, this fast fashion trend yeah. means that actually, if you, if you discount, let's say, marketplaces for a second, the appetite through combining all your sales channels and providing a much better experience for the consumer means that you, don't, you shouldn't have to hemorrhage your prices necessarily or core pricing by going on marketplaces, okay? I think there's two things. You can absolutely, you know, build a million dollar business. Absolutely. If you do take advantage of all sales channels, but it comes down to a brand conversation. If I'm a luxury brand in retail, um, I certainly do not want to be seen on marketplaces discounting 50%, 60%, 70%. I'm being forced to do that by eBay or Amazon Mm -hmm. to be just be replaced by one of their own brands. Okay. And that is the reality of what is happening, right? And so I think um, you have to make sure that you maximize your sales channels in line with your brand strategy and looking at the customer data as to where they want to purchase, okay? There is a reality that there's nearly a billion people on marketplaces. So how do I access, how am I going to get a, you know, that level of volume to my own e-store, right? It costs money, CPC costs money, and unless you're, you know, in the mid to premium level, often the ROI isn't there to reinvest in CPC and to drive that audience to your web store. So, you know, I think people often focus on my web store needs to look amazing, but at the end of the day, it's like a store, you know, it's the same as any other store. If you don't drive football, if you don't want to drive an online audience, what's the point in, in doing it in the first place? So. I don't know whether that helps or not. <laughs> uh, made it more complex. I, but, uh, I, I think you hit some really good points there and um, successfully made the argument that it depends on your customer base, I think. Yeah, and the brand, definitely the brand because different sales channels don't work. But I think a very interesting, um, very interesting what some brands are doing and they're looking at category-driven marketplaces much more and now as an alternative strategy, yes, it's, it's, you know, there's more to do, right? Because there's less of an audience on those, but also it's less crowded. Mm-hmm. And also mm-hmm. it can be specific, much more specific to your brand. So I think boutique marketplaces are definitely a really good route to investigate. And um, if you're looking at increasing revenue, but protecting your core pricing and your brand and um, equity. Excellent answer there. Well, thank you so much, Kieran. That has been been brilliant. Um, and before we say goodbye, would you just like to remind everyone where they can find Kumo on the web and social media, please? Yes, of course. Love to. 
So just below there's a link um, to kumo.com just on the screen. And so it's www.koomo.com as you can see in the logo in the background. Um, and you can go to YouTube, you'll find some of the videos and uh, contact sales at kumo.com. Marvellous. Well, happy Christmas, everybody, and happy Christmas to you too, Kieran. Uh, yeah, Merry Christmas, everybody.